Hi there, Michelle. Crafty Servings and my buddy Cash. He's happier now. Hello, Paula. Here we go. So I got some quilted fabric and it was on clearance for $6 a yard. So I got two yards of it and I used just a real little bit of it for this project. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to do one on here and it's one that something everybody does. Okay. Everybody does it, but I've got probably 10, 10 to 12 ideas of how to use them. Okay, so we're gonna do one on here and then um, wait till you see all my ideas. This is the quilted fabric and you can see, I used one strip of it for probably eight of them, nine of them, one strip. It's two-sided, look at the other side. It's gorgeous, this side is gorgeous we are going to make quilted hearts you can use them for valentine's you can leave them out year round it's just it just like i said so many ideas that i've got here to use with them and you don't even have to do hearts but i decided i was going to do hearts because it's almost valentine's day so let's get started so i also had picked up coordinating fabrics i did pick up a black one too just a plain black but i decided not to even use it and because I was going to use it for a completely different idea, this was on sale, I think probably $5.99 a yard. The one time I got them on sale for like $2.99 a yard. All right, so all I did with this, let me just tell you, and I've got it already prepped so I don't have to cut it in front of you. And I've got three of them here. We're only going to do one. I cut out a heart, just like we did when we were kids cut out a heart whatever size you want so one of the ideas i have here almost any idea you could do this for you probably want to make this a little bit smaller but again there's so many ideas there it's crazy what you can come up with to do with these i have i have like probably 10 to 12 ideas sitting right here on my table um so what i did was you cut i'm cutting one of the coordinating fabric and then one of the quilted fabrics. I turn the heart sometimes to get the different design. This uh, you can see the stripes are up and down. This is um, diagonal. This one is a diagonal too. So we're just gonna let's just use this one. And I'm just gonna show you how I sew it. It's hand sewing. You could glue it, but because it's quilted fabric, I will show you what you'd have to do. All right, I got my stitch. So I've been using the orange and I've been using yellow. So let's just do yellow on this one. I think it's a little easier for y'all to see on here. You hand sew, and it's perfect for hand sewing. Like I said, you could, you could machine sew this. You could glue it, but let me show you. If you're going to try gluing this, if you're using a quilted fabric, quilted fabric means there's layers in between. You would have to try and get glue in between there and then push it down in because that'll peel back up unless you're going to put some kind of lining around it or something. So that's why I chose that I wanted to hand sew it. And I'm just using embroidery floss again. This is the same kind of sewing that I've done on my... Um, fabric creations and uh, and i've got more of them to come to I, I have the fabric all picked out all right the other thing i'm using is this large jute so as you tell i'm going to be doing quilted stars or stars i'm going to be doing quilted hearts but you're going to be able to leave them up year round and i've got so many ideas to show you of how to use this so um, people do this all the time too. I mean, it's not a big deal, but we're gonna put a button on it and make it sort of cute. So the top of the heart is about five and a half inches wide. The height of it is probably about five and a half inches. So at least that I just do it on paper. I, or I didn't even draw it. I just cut out a heart and that's what I got. So then you're going to take a piece of this jute and I already cut it. Um... This is about 15 and a half inches long. So I'd say, you know, 16 inches, 15, 16 inches would be a good, good height. And that's if you want to put a hanger on it. 
I do, and this is thicker, so I need to have it that little bit longer, but I'm just going to tie a knot on this bottom half, and that's what's going to hold it in when I sew it. So we're just going to knot that, and I'll just show you. We're just doing one because I have a bunch of them made up here, and I've got so many ideas of what to do with them. All right, so what I'm doing is with this tie then, I'm just going to lay that in here. Now, I don't want the tie side to side because if you're going to put it on like a garland or you're going to hang it on something, what well, depends what you're hanging it on too. If you're putting it on a garland, you'd want it to go like this in here, which is what I actually did with all of them. But I guess if you're putting it on anything else I'm showing you, you probably would want it like this. So it just really depends. So I'll do it the same as the rest of them because honestly, what I'm going to, my ultimate hanging, what I'm going to do with this is I think this will, I did them all like this and I could put this as a garland. I could replace that as a garland. So I'm just going to lay that in there, make sure the knot is down farther and lay that right in the middle. And then now this, it's going to be hard if you don't have pins or something like that. You have to figure out something to get it to hold together. So I'm just going to try and pin that in there so that's going to stay in place. And then I'm going to pin all the way around. And it's going to be stuffed, but you still want to pin it so that you know it's going to be even all the way around. And like I said, we're just doing this one on here. So it's it's your basic hand sewing, just like I did on my fabric creations, only I'm not going to pull it as tight. On those, I usually really pull tight on the stitch. Here, I'm not going to. All right, so I started, I have a knot down here on the side of it. And I'm going to start like in the middle here. And I'm going to leave a little opening for stuffing and then I'll finish sewing it. So I just want to, I want to start on the inside. And again, if you're going to glue it and you're using quilted fabric, you've got that there already. So you're going to have to figure out, get glue inside of there and pinch it good. It might get a little messy, you know, or put a little trim then around it or maybe some lace or something, but it will get a little messy if you've using this quilted fabric for that. So I'm just doing inside between here so that that knot is down in there is in between the two layers so that you're not going to see that knot. And then I'm just going to keep going around this first one because I want to see that stitch there. All right. And then you just keep moving all the way around, but you want to make sure that your back fabric is being caught. And just so just keep going over the top. And I keep coming up, going in through the back and up through the top. And you see the stitching on there. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it's not going to take long, honestly. To do one of these won't take long. You're going to keep going all the way around. All right, so I'm, I'm just pulling out the pins as I go. Just now, when you get closer to this edge here where you've got the jute, I'm going to catch it like right next to the jute here. And real tight next to that jute there. And that's going to hold that knot in. But then what I'm also going to do is now I'm going to go on the back here. I'm going to catch that fabric down here. And I'm going to go right through that jute and that's going to hold the jute in the direction that I want because I want it like this in case I'm going to hang it on something for like a garland. But if you don't mind and you if you're going to hang it and all the hearts are going to face forward, you can hang it the other way, which actually, like I said, I've got so many ideas here. And my, my favorite idea, um, I probably could do it the other way. Okay, I want to make sure I don't have a knot here. I'm getting a knot. There we go. Okay, so I just caught that jute in there. Now I'm going to go on this side and do the same thing. Make sure you catch it right next to that jute. Let me pull out that pin. 
Yeah, you don't want that to knot up underneath there. Okay, and then we're going to just finish going around now. And we're going to leave a little opening over where we started. All right, I got about a third of it done, so you can see it's not going to take long. Now that I'm on the straight side, and I always try and look at the back, especially when you're going to see it, to make sure I'm getting a good amount on this back side and not that I'm missing that back flap. Again, all right, if you get a knot in there, you got to try and get that out of that string. And that's just because I'm using this thicker, I'm using embroidery floss, which there's six strands of string actually on this embroidery floss. You could separate it down to maybe three if you wanted, but you're still going to have to watch when you do that. You just don't want to make sure that that twists and causes a knot somewhere because you're going to definitely see if you have a knot and you don't want to start over. All right, we're, I just want to get around this point here up a little ways, and then we're going to stuff it and then finish it off. Pin on, I'm just pulling the pins out as I go. And like I said, on the Fabric Creations, I pull that stitch really tight, but on here, I'm just closing it up, so I'm not gathering, I'm not pulling so tight that it gathers up. All right, and down in this point, I want to make sure that it stays a point and I don't gather right across that bottom like that. I want to make sure it stays a point. So I'm going to go around and I'm probably going to go in the same hole that I was already in. And that's going to create it on the stitch on this side. And then I'm going to bring it over this side and that way that's still going to stay a point. But I'm going to use that same hole again. And I'll show you the back. You'll be able to see what I do from the back. So you can see how the back is on the bottom there. That's how we are going to avoid pulling up that corner. We want to keep it looking like a nice pointy heart. All right, I think that's probably far enough for now. Now, I have enough string on here left to finish this probably, but if you don't, just knot it off and take another piece of string. All right, so we've got that opening in there. This knot is inside of there. You see the knot from here is inside of there. We're going to take some fiber fill now. And just stuff it. So I'm going to get it past that knot and put it up. Into that corner over here. And you don't need to stuff it real hard. Or real, real tight. But I want it to have a little bit of body because we're going to add a button in the middle. And that'll cause that little poof. And now I'm also going to make sure that I've got some on top of where that knot was so that knot doesn't cause a big, just a little spot of a bulk there. And I want to make sure there's some on top of the knot here too. So if you didn't watch from the beginning, there is a knot on this jute inside of there. And I showed you how to do that. So you just want to make sure there's some of this fiber fill on top of that and on the bottom of it. Okay, so that's pretty good. We don't need it really a lot. We're just going to just do a little tad more. All right, so now I'm going to just hold this. Do I want a little more there? Maybe just a tad more, just a tad. Get it up in this peak up here. Make sure it's in the peak down there. There. All right, let's just finish sewing this up. 
and then we're going to add a button to it and then I'm going to show you all the ideas I have sitting on my table here that you could do with these. So many. Like I said, if you're if you're a gluer and not a hand sewer like this, or if you're a machine sewer, you can certainly do that. If you're a gluer, because this is quilted fabric, it's got like almost like two layers with that quilt with that fiber in between. You're gonna have to try and glue inside those layers then in order to make this work. Or cover up this edge if you're not gonna sew it, you might have to, you know, glue something around it. Hello, Kathy. All right, we're almost at the point of closing it. Look at, isn't that just beautiful? <laughs> it's just gorgeous. All right, so let's um, put it to the back here and then I'm gonna do a knot like on this next string. Now you might see that knot a little bit, but it's not so bad. So you, I'm just hooking it through that last string that was on there, pulling it as far as I can and leaving that little bit of loop. And before I pull it too tight, I'm sticking that needle in there. And I'm going to pull it really tight and that creates a knot. And we're going to do it one, one more time on that same one. Pull it just far enough that you have room to get that needle in here in that loop. And pull it and that creates that knot. All right, now we're going to add the button, and then I'm going to show you the, like I said, it's probably a dozen ideas I have laying here. We're actually adding two buttons, one on the front and one on the back, so they're reversible. Yeah, you can get these large needles just at Walmart. At Walmart and like the cruel work or Hobby Lobby, you know, by the embroidery, by the embroidery kind of stuff, embroidery, cruel, and embroidery floss. That's where you can get these needles. Um, it's not a huge hole, but it, it's plenty. It is plenty big to try and get that in. So, all right. So I've got my my thing of all my brown buttons. Let's just. I like this size. I like the size and I love that color with here. So we're going to grab one more for the back. Oh, it has a little stripe through it. That would be sort of cute. And actually we could do a darker, we'll do a darker one on the back maybe. No, maybe not. Okay, so now this one, that's another difference. This one has two holes. If you want to make it a little decorative, you could find one that has four holes. Oh, this one would be, oh, that has an anchor. Let's just see. Now, I'll show you one that has two holes, but I really like the four hole one. So let me just find two of them the size I want that has four holes. Here's one. So that, see the difference? That has four holes. This one only has two. We're going to do that on there. And then let's do, find another one with four holes. We'll do maybe that one. You can do two holes also. Um, and it's probably, it's less sewing then. But we're going to make it a little creative. All right, so you just want to make sure that's sort of centered. And so I lift that off, and I'm going to just take a stitch. Now I do have, I'm just going to do a little, just a little stitch there. I have a knot at the end here. We're going to take this and pull it through, and that's going to be hidden by the button. All right, and then we're going to put this button through one of the holes. And just put the needle straight down through and pull it. And now you can see the string is on the one. I don't know if you can see that right there. The string is through the one. You'll see it more on here. All right, so we're going to string this one on. Lay it the way you want it. And put that needle straight down through. And then I want to come up a different hole on the front than where the string. I guess it's sort of hard for you to see this 
color on here. But then you pull it nice and tight. And we're going to put it back down the next hole. So we're going to end up making a square all the way around with this string on both sides of this. So let's just, we want to make sure it comes up a hole here that we can create. So you get stuck on the button. You have to move the needle around till it comes up in one of the holes. All right. And can you see that orange now in the middle there? I think you can. All right, so then I'm just going to come across on this side. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're starting it like up and down or across. You just want it to end up going all the way around. So now I'm just going to bring it across because I want to create again that, that square stitch with all four of the holes. Or if you want to do an X, you could just go back and forth and keep making it look like an X. Or if you have the two holes, it's just going to end up being the stitch in between those two holes. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I'm coming up to make that fourth. Okay, and I'm pulling it nice and tight so that I get this little pucker in here. All right, now I'm going to put it down through the fourth. And you can see it better on here, too, how I've got it on three, three holes. Now I've got to create, there, I've got to get it up through that one because I'm going to bring it up. The fabric, Deborah, is from, Quilted Fabric is from um, Joanne Fabrics. It was on clearance for $6 a yard. I picked up two yards, two yards of it. That's this quilted one on the front. Okay, so now this one is stitched all the way around. I think you can see that. And then this one is stitched. It has one stitch left to do, so I have to put it down through there to finish that stitch. But then I'm going to bring it up to the side of my button. See that? So that it's coming out underneath your button but to the side because that's how I'm going to knot it now. Because this one already is good. Now this one is good. It has all the way around there. So again, I just brought it up under my button. Now I'm going to take the needle and run it right through underneath the button where I'm catching those middle stitches. I hope you can see this. I'm catching those middle stitches. And again, I'm going to leave this loop here. And by putting the needle right through that loop and pulling it tight, it's going to create a knot behind there. And we're going to do that two times. And then this is going to be done. And then I'm going to show you all the cool ways you can decorate with this. And there's so many other ideas you could do with this quilted fabric. Okay, then we're just going to cut that nice and short. Close up my button so I don't have a disaster with that. But look at how simple and cute okay and you see these everywhere honestly the, of course they're it's not my creation but i wanted to do it with this quilted fabric because i love the pattern but wait till you see all the different things here now all right so i have a bunch of these here and this is the back of that fabric no actually that's not this is actually part of the front it was a bigger part Just grab this and shoot. It was actually part of this bigger part is what this was. But each time I put the heart on and cut it, I would turn my paper heart a different way so that you'd get your different patterns. But then you can also use the back of this quilted fabric, which is gorgeous, and do the same thing. So, and it all coordinates together, okay? So again, that was from Joanne's Fabrics. Same with this fabric, and it's a little bit thicker fabric, which I love. I'm just pulling out all my, I think that's all of them I have made up. This is calming to me, so when I sit here and I start on one, I just, I, it makes my mind go away. I just, I love doing this. I just love doing this. All right, so I've got all these different different ones. 
they're two-sided. First thing, probably the most obvious, is you could do this. Let me get this out of my way. Just cleaning up some of this. Okay, first but probably most obvious is I could use this as a garland behind. And that's why I had my string turned sideways in these. So I got this rope also. It was on clearance at Joanne Fabrics too. But you can have, put a bunch of these on here. You can have it front and back. You can have some of the green ones going forward. But you can have this hanging on whatever you want as a garland. Okay, so, you know, put them on the direction that you want, put them in the, in the order, but so you've got that as a garland, right? You could also string them all on there and just tie a knot and let them hang, and when you put them against the wall, they'll sort of lay flat. All right, so that's, that's one idea, is a garland. Very, very simple and easy. Let me grab this too. Now, you could use the same quilted fabric. You wouldn't even have to stuff it. You could use just a single layer, and you wouldn't have to have this loop on here. But this is Hobby Lobby, just a shelf sitter. Or you can hang it on a shelf, too. I love these so much. You could lay this on here like this. Take a roping or jute or something. So, again, if you just had the fabric card, it might be better with just a fabric card. Where did I put my fabric cards? It doesn't have to be stuffed. But you could just lay that on here and do this roping all the way around here. And that would be just a simple, easy, cute little idea. Let me get my fingers out of the way. Simple, simple, cute. I could put it on my mantle, Michelle, and I might. But let me show you all my other different ideas that I got for it. All right, so that's that's an idea of you do do you do it on this? I'm trying to see where I can put everything because I have so much over here, so much over here. You could use like one of your green wreaths. And again, if you don't have that on, that's fine. You know, you could do it all the way around. You know, you could you could fill up a big green wreath. This is a little green wreath. The other option to that is you could use a big grapevine wreath. You could actually hang it if you want all the way around. You could hang it or you can just also, again, put it all the way around. All right, what number is that? The one, two, three, four, four ideas so far. All right, so now we've got, I just have little extra doodads in here. That can go away. Little extra doodads, but, and full of gar uh, glitter. All right, so this is a long double. You could just, the normal, lay them out. Lay them something like that in your dough bowl, or you could go every other one and just lay them up like this. Every other one. That would be really, really cute, right? So that's number four. Maybe I lied when I don't have a dozen, but I do have pretty many. Um, oh, another idea with this. Oh, gosh, don't eat them. Don't eat them, Cash. As long as he's not getting up with this. All right, you, you see these everywhere. A lot of places. A lot of specialty little, little shops have them. What if you put that on here and then put one of these hearts on here, too? That would be just really, really cute. You could do it as the green one. The green would really stand out well. But just put it on like that, and you would have a little cute shelf sitter. All right, so that's number six. All 
And then we got a round little dough bowl. Remember my cute little flowers that I stamped on? Same thing. Same thing. Round, fill it up. So you get the idea on that. The other thing, even without any other kind of surface, I have more surfaces here, trust me. Even without any other surface is, what if you would stitch these together into a wreath? You could go all the way around and stitch them together. Let's just do this. You have to make that a little bigger so that it comes out or no, probably like this. Stitch them together in the corners and do that as a hanging. That would be really, really cute. You got that? That'd be adorable. All you'd have to do is make a stitch in between each one, just like we were doing, and you could put it together and make a really, really cute one. Again, you don't always need this on here, um, the hanger, but honestly, that's sort of cute too with the hangers. All right, got it? How many is that? Is that number seven? That was number seven. And you can make it as big as you want. You know, add, as, add more, you can make it as big as you want. That's number seven. Number eight, how about turning winter into like Valentine? So this I had done on a live probably a couple years ago. It's really not even, it's not glued in, it's not anything on here, but it's just a board from Walmart with a burlap bag probably from Walmart and some greens in it. What if you would stuff a heart in here? And what if you would stuff a heart back here? Let's do a put a heart behind here and turn it a little bit into Valentine's. Just put some of those stuffed hearts. We put, <laughs> I said it's not glued in. Put that stuffed heart in there and then we could probably do another one back over on this side and just decorate up your winter into some Valentine too. Just add those little stuffed hearts and you could even add one down here. You can make it smaller and just add it down here also. That would be really, really cute. Right? Yes, definitely a Dollar Tree wreath. All right, so that, I love this idea. I love that idea. I just never took the time to glue this together. It completely, I could just pull it right out. It's not glued in there at all. All right. Another idea, Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree Little House. Make this a little smaller. You can make it, but actually you won't even have to make smaller. You could paint it and just put it on. Just something simple, easy, Dollar Tree. Paint it the color you want and put it on. And you could do a little one. You could do a little one, smaller. What was that, like nine? Eight, I've got four more ideas here. Sticks on the bottom of hearts. You could put sticks on bottom of hearts. Sticks. Oh, thank you, Heather. Uh, all right. So Dollar Tree again. No, this is um, Hobby Lobby when they were on clearance. And it's painted. There was, there was words in there. So I painted it, but I never used it. Make it a smaller heart. Make it a smaller heart, but just stick it in there. But make it smaller. It'd be just simple and cute and easy, but make it smaller so it would fit. Easy. Easy, you don't have to do anything to it. Just stick it in there. Now this one, I would do smaller hearts. I got two left. So I would do smaller hearts, but this also was on clearance at Hobby Lobby when I got it last year. It was spring from last year. Just make smaller hearts and line them up on here. Make smaller hearts, line them up on there, hang it on the wall in the kitchen. That would be really, really cute too, right? Are you liking these ideas? Are you liking them? Hello, Stacy. 
So, all right, two left. One of them I know you're not going to be able to find, I don't think, <laughs> but you can get creative. Okay, this one is not a branch out of my yard, but I would go get a branch out of my yard, <coughs> except everything's all wet right now. Yeah, the board is my favorite, I think, other than, well, the next one's going to be sort of cool too. Branch out of your yard, just hang them around on this branch. You could even like do it like this. Hang them around on your branch and put it in a pot, put it like in a clay pot and hang it around. If you have a Valentine's chair, if you keep a tree up year round, these are perfect for it. All right, so you definitely put your different ones on branches, but this is not the proper, this is like a Hobby Lobby branch that I picked everything off of and this is what's left. But you definitely can do something like that. Put it in a pot, clay pot with um, raffia or some, what do you call it, excelsior in or moss. Put that in there. That would be really super cute too. But go pick your branch if you have a branch. This is not the branch I would have. Last but not least, now this is something that you probably can't, won't be able to find. I don't know where it was found. I know where I got it from. It, it, we had gotten it for my father-in-law when he was in um, a nursing home and it was for on his door to decorate and it had, it had like, like some florals, like off white florals and brown florals, but it had like peacock feathers coming out, which was really cool, but he never liked it. He never liked it. We had it for on his door. He never liked it. He thought it was too girly and he didn't want it on there. So finally we just took it because he didn't want it. And it was like, all right, fine. We'll just take it. You don't need to put it on your door. So I took everything off of here and I've had this sitting here for how long? So you could do it like this. You could hang them up, up and down like this. That would be sort of cute. But I liked it when I was doing this. So I just have it like this. And I just started hanging some of these on here. And you could do this with so many things. And it just started, it would just look so adorable. And just hang it on different, different hooks. And then this could hang on a wall. This could hang on a door. But it's just, I thought it was just super cute. Yeah, you, it doesn't have any peacock feathers anymore, which I don't know. I said it's peacock feathers. You're a hunter. Why don't you like it? <laughs> he didn't like it. But, um, but yeah, so if you do something like that, you know, if you have something like that, it would just be, it, it, it would be just super cute. But, yeah, you could honestly, you could turn it this way. And have them all hanging off in different different directions. You can hang it on your wall and redecorate it whenever you want. How many was that? Have you been counting? I'd say that was at least 10. I'd say that was at least 10. That was a lot of ideas. And there's so many more. If you just walk around your house, there's so many ideas you can get. Um, I, I know I don't get on here as often as I should, but I just, I, there's times I just can't. So we, you know, appreciate y'all. I appreciate you coming on and thanks for putting up with me. So, all right, y'all have a good one. And until I see you again, stay happy, healthy, and safe.